In a fantasy world under the blue sky, humans were blessed with heavenly energy. Humans born in that world possessed an inborn power jewel, although oblivious to what the jewel will be. Only when they attain a certain level of heavenly Jing energy will they awaken their power jewel and become jewel masters. Power jewels were divided into two, a jewel on the right hand known as the physical jewel, which granted the user outrageous physical attributes. These jewels themselves can transform into weapons or armor. The jewel on the left hand was known as an elemental jewel, which enhanced the mental abilities of the user, making it possible for the user to control elements. Then, some rare individuals could awaken both jewels and were known as the heavenly jewel masters. There were also those who had difficulties cultivating heavenly energy because they had an obstruction in energy flow within their bodies. An example of such was our MC Zhou Wei, who was on the outskirts of the city smiling because he had finally escaped his overbearing old man. He muttered to himself about his problem of being unable to cultivate his energy, saying it was a waste considering he had such a handsome face. However, he comforted himself that even though he had been unable to cultivate, his old man still forced him to exercise and feared it would have been worse if he had been able to cultivate. With that, he danced happily because, as the son of a high-ranking official, he deserved to soak himself in the spring and not exercise even in hot weather. Just then, his eyes widened in excitement as he sighted the beautiful, cool spring he had been looking for. Without hesitation, our boy threw off his clothes and dived into the spring, plot exposed like Aquaman. At that moment, he felt refreshed. He stared into the blue water and admired his gorgeous hot face that would riz up any chick non-stop. Just then, he heard a sound, so he hid his entire body underwater with his face afloat to observe his surroundings. He sighted a hot girl with long hair entering the spring and was mesmerized by her beautiful back view and smooth skin. He cried tears of joy because in one day, he never expected to enjoy this much. However, his excitement shattered when a voice called him cultured, telling him to go to hell. The voice addressed the hot chick with long hair as a princess and alerted her to be cautious because a peeping creep was on the loose. In the blink of an eye, a female knight popped out of nowhere, pointing a sword at Chu Wei, telling him he would surely meet his maker for peeping at girls taking their bath. Chu Wei stared at the female knight and noticed she had three power jewels on her right hand, which meant the girl would definitely be an expert swordsman. Before he could say anything, the female knight threatened to cut off his man's stick from its dangle region. Hearing this, our boy emerged from the water, fully exposing his dumbbell, begging the angry girl to chill, saying it was all a misunderstanding. The angry girl didn't give a shit about his explanation and went ahead to tie our MC to a tree while he continued to beg for the issue to be resolved amicably. She responded that he dared to peep on people while they bathed, but Zhu Wei told her it wasn't intentional and that he didn't even see anything. This infuriated the night girl even more, who asked if he wasn't peeping what was he doing. Zhu Wei replied that he was just having a bath and a peeping Tom wouldn't undress. However, the girl responded and informed him that whether he lived or died was not in her hands but in the hands of the princess. Hearing this, Zhu Wei asked if it was Defuya, the princess of the kingdom she was referring to. The girl ignored his question, but the princess, who had finished dressing, joined the conversation by asking if Zhu Wei knew her. He responded by widening his eyes in surprise. He immediately told the knight to release him since he and the princess were acquainted. That moment, the princess recognized him, and her voice immediately became cold and harsh, saying she never believed the peeping Tom was actually trash. After saying that, she ordered the knight, named Nia, to execute Zhou Wei immediately. Hearing this, Zhou Wei began to sweat bullets and asked why the princess was being unreasonable. Seeing that Nia had already unsheathed her sword, Zhou Wei screamed worse than a girl saying that he was the princess's fiance, shocking Nia. Princess Difuya responded almost immediately, trash-talking him that she would never accept a worthless, ugly vulture as her fiance and ordered Nia to go ahead with the execution. Watching his life flash before his eyes, Zhou Wei immediately introduced himself as the son of the Grandmaster Viscount Zhou of the Bao Empire. Hearing this, Nia turned to the princess, mediating on his behalf, telling the princess to reconsider her order since the dude was a viscount of the empire's son. Princess Tiffia instantly shut her mouth, telling her that any man she would marry must be top tier and a hero above all, not a disgusting glorified donkey pointing at Chu Wei. That moment, Zhou Wei had gotten enough of the princess roasting and stared at her menacingly. He laughed sarcastically and asked of what if he peeped on her while she bathed. 
Since he was her fiance, her body was still his anyway. He smiled and told her whether she liked it or not. She was doomed to marry a cultured garbage like him, which pissed the princess to oblivion. He added that with how proud and arrogant she was, he was even doing her a favor by marrying her. If not for his block meridian, he wouldn't even peep at her, because she didn't even have any reasonable plot to be peeped at in the first place. Hearing this, Hell hath no fury like what the princess unleashed. She instantly blasted Zhou Wei with a massive ball of fire, telling him to die twice while Nita tried stopping her. That moment, the impact of the powerful flame exploded the tree and sent Zhou Wei flying, crashing to the ground and coughing out blood, while the princess just stared. Seeing Zhao Wei sprawled on the ground, badly scorched like roasted beef, the princess began feeling bad and announced that she didn't mean to end Zhou Wei, she acted only on impulse. Just then, Nia assessed the situation and concluded that it was best she took the princess away, since there was no witness, and it was certain Zhou Wei inched closer to his demise. Without wasting time, she immediately grabbed the princess and told her they needed to leave. So the girls left, leaving our guy sprawl on the ground, still coughing out blood. Soon after, Zhao Mani began to lose consciousness, making him feel like his end had finally come. He stared at the sky and noticed the cloud had started to gather with lightning. The lightning intensified and out of the lightning emerged a black jewel. The black jewel descended at the speed of light and struck him on the head, electrocuting his entire body and causing him to scream in unbearable pain. That instant, energy swirled around his body and he began to levitate towards the skies everything around. Even the flowers also levitated. The lightning suddenly began to heal the burn on his skin and then dropped him on the ground unconscious. A few minutes later, Zhou Wei woke up feeling reborn, though his head was pounding. Memories of the nutcase princess and the appearance of the black jewel flashed through his mind. He wondered if it had all been a dream and how he was still alive. Glancing around, he noticed the burnt vegetation nearby, confirming it was no dream. Inspecting himself, he was shocked to find his burns completely healed, suspecting the black jewel had somehow saved him by entering his body. Excited to be alive, he leaped to his feet only to realize he was stark naked. Hastily, he dressed, hoping no one had seen his mini-sized sausage, and then decided to test if the black jewel had given him any special powers. Spotting a large tree, he walked over to test his strength. Clenching his fist, he punched it with all his might, only to feel an intense pain in his fist. Realizing he'd been too hopeful, he winced and let out a cry of pain. Frustrated that the jewel hadn't granted him any powers after all, Frustrated, he kicked the tree and began considering his next move. He thought about heading home but quickly reconsidered, assuming the princess had already reported his peeping Tom incident to his father. Staying in the woods for a few days seemed safer. The harsh realization that he was broker than a church rat, without food or water, made him worry about starving to death. After cursing the crackhead princess for his predicament, he reluctantly decided it was best to return home after all. With a heavy sigh, he began his journey back. A few minutes after he'd left, the massive tree he'd punched was struck by lightning, causing it to collapse and bring down the surrounding trees with it. Hours later, Joe Wyatt reached the gates of Skybow City, but hesitated to enter, worried that his father might just be waiting for him at the gate. However, he soon noticed an unusually large crowd gathered there, sparking his curiosity and making him wonder if something had happened. So he approached the teeming crowd, squeezing his way to the front to see what the excitement was all about. Getting to the front, he was faced with a man conducting military recruitment. That brought excitement to his face because by joining the army, he could be a hero and he wouldn't have to starve because he would be well fed. He smiled because with that, his old man would never call them a useless disappointment again. So after a random loser left the queue, he approached the recruiter, informing him with a smile that he would love to join the army. The recruiter stared at him, wondering what was fun about joining the military for the kid to be all giddy. He then asked Zhou Wei which service he would like to join. Zhou Wei, who never thought there was a different service in the military, thought deeply about the question. He didn't want to join the infantry because it would be dangerous fighting on the battlefield since he hadn't even cultivated his heavenly energy yet. Joining the army as a chef was out of the way because his old man would just call him a good-for-nothing piece of However, he needed a safe service that would still allow him to eliminate enemies on the battlefield. So after much brooding, he informed the recruiter that he would love to be an archer. The recruiter then asked for his name and age. Zhu Wei knew he couldn't use his real name because his old man would eventually find out, and using his actual age would also disqualify him. 
he was 13, and according to the military regulation, he had to be 16 to be qualified. With that, he lied that his name was Peter Parker, and he was 16 years old. So the recruiter handed him a form and directed him to where he would take an examination. Soon after, Joe Wei got to the recruit assessment for the examination and was met by a soldier who had the face of a drug dealer. Zhu Wei informed the face that he had chosen archery which made the ugly man smile, assuring him that he had made the right decision. The ugly dude then handed a bow to him, asking him to show his skills. Zhu Wei stared at the bow and realized the bow was no ordinary bow because it was tough for an average person to pull. However, he readied himself and pulled the string backward effortlessly, better than Robin Hood ever could. Seeing that the guy informed him that he had passed the examination and was now a member of the Archer Battalion, stunning Zhou Wei, who couldn't believe it could be that easy. The guy pointed out that his posture was that of a professional archer, which made our boy blush, and mentioned that indeed he was a skilled archer. After that, the man congratulated him and announced that he was lucky to be part of the battalion. The dude then directed him to the barracks to meet the battalion commander and also get military equipment. So Zhou Wei headed to the barracks, and on getting there, he stood over a long white curtain hanging over the entrance. He stretched his hands to shift the curtain to the side to get the equipment, but immediately grabbed hold of something soft. He wondered what it was and continued to press harder to figure it out. Just then, he received a fine punch to his guts that stopped the beating of his heart for a minute, sending him falling to the ground. Out of the curtain, a hot blue-haired baddie emerged angrily, asking who the heck Xiao Wei was. Our boy sat on the ground, still dazed, and as his senses returned, he recognized the girl standing before him. It was Shangwen, the kingdom's hottest and most admired beauty, leaving Zhou Wei stunned. Though a commoner, Shangwen's talent had made her the city's number two heavenly jewel master, with only Zhou Wei's father surpassing her. She'd proven herself more than just a pretty face by joining the military, and her reputation was so great that the entire camp practically worshipped her like a goddess. Realizing he just used his hands to grab the soft melons of the kingdom's top beauty, Zhou Wei's eyes widened and he started to nosebleed from excitement. Meanwhile, Shangwen was still standing there seething. She instantly drew her sword, pointing it directly at him and demanding to know who gave him permission to trespass in the barracks. Terrified, Zhou Wei quickly held up his enrollment form, explaining that he was a new recruit. Relieved but still visibly annoyed, Shangwen took the form, examined it, and realized he was indeed telling the truth. Still fuming over what had happened, she sighed in motion for Zhou Wei to follow her into the barracks. Once inside, Shangwen ordered a blue-haired, donkey-faced soldier to provide Zhu Wei with his military equipment. A few minutes later, the soldier handed him a bag containing his uniform and bow, reminding him to take care of it and warning that any tardiness would be punished. Zhu Wei thanked him and then left, but Shangwen was clearly still pissed about getting her pleasure hills violated. As he wandered through the barracks, Zhou Wei decided to try on his new uniform. Wearing an army uniform had always been a dream of his. Spotting a washroom nearby, he figured he'd change there. Unfortunately, he didn't notice the sign stating that only the battalion commander had access to it. Clueless, he entered, marveling at how spotless the washroom was. Without hesitation, he tossed his clothes aside, and just as he was about to change, he felt the urge to pee. Smiling at his luck, he relieved himself in the toilet, feeling like life couldn't get any better. Lost in thought, he remembered Shangwen and her stunning beauty musing that she'd make a far better fiancée than the arrogant knucklehead princess who'd nearly sent him to his ancestors. Looking down at the hands that had grabbed Shangwen's soft melons, he vowed never to wash them for a year. Just then, the door creaked open, snapping him back to reality. In a panic, he shouted that the washroom was occupied, but it was too late. He turned and found himself face to face with Shangwen, who stared back at him with utter disgust. She immediately covered her eyes from seeing anything impure. However, Zhu Wei flustered, screamed, asking why she didn't knock before barging. She responded, telling him she didn't need to knock since the washroom was for her private use. Soon after, Zhu Wei wore his clothes and apologized that he was changing into his uniform and quickly had to answer nature's call. But the already angry girl pushed him outside and slammed the door, telling him to wait outside. She would deal with this when she was done handling her business. However, our boy knew only a fool would wait to see her fury, so he left, hoping the next day her anger would have dissipated. With that, he headed for the post office to send a letter to his father, telling him he was all right and not to worry. He also sought his assistance to break off his engagement with Princess Tafuya. 
Afterwards, Zhao Wei decided to purchase protective gear with the little change he had since he would be a soldier officially the next day. Meanwhile, the scene transitioned to the Imperial Palace, where the Emperor De Fang furiously scolded the princess for what she did to Zhou Wei. He threatened that if Zhou Wei were found dead because of her rascal actions, she would be buried alongside him. Hearing this, the princess didn't understand why her father treated her this way because of a mere commoner. The Emperor informed her that he owed his life to Zhu Wei's father, who risked everything to save him when he was in the enemy's territory. He also yelled that the Empire had been able to survive for twenty years because of that man's valiant victories. Her father continued with the scolding that as a member of the royal family, she was not trying to develop the Empire but had wasted her life dreaming about some Prince Charming. However, just then, two members of the search party interrupted. Emperor Daifeng turned, asking if Zhu Wei was dead, to which they replied that they didn't find his body, but they found his footprint leaving the area, which proved he was certainly still alive. Hearing this, the Emperor wondered how Zhao Wei was able to survive a blow from an elemental fire jewel. The search party then pointed out that it could be that Zhou Wei's father had given him a life-saving artifact, which the Emperor agreed. With that, he ordered Princess Tefuya to get up and told her they would meet Zhu Wei's father so she could apologize to her fiancés. Meanwhile, back to Zhu Wei, who was finally able to purchase a titanium helmet, which made him smile. He knew if he squatted on the battlefield wearing the helmet, arrows from above wouldn't be able to hurt him. Even though he spent all he had to purchase it, he was delighted he did. Just then, he remembered that he had hidden some treasures in the forest long ago. So he entered the forest, stuck his hands into a hollow tree, and retrieved an item. He smiled, saying that he was wise enough to wrap it in an oilcloth, otherwise it would have been damaged. This treasure was found in the forest when he was younger. He had found a skeleton clinging to the book, which was titled Immortality Arts. As Zhou Wei stared at the book, he knew he had to get stronger, not after what the princess did to him. He was going to be sixteen soon, and if he still could not activate his heavenly jewel, that might be the end. So he tried practicing the mysterious cultivation technique found recorded in the book. The following morning, Zhao Wei headed to the army camp looking like a snack donned in his army uniform. On entering the camp, he met a soldier named Mao Li, who offered to show him his accommodation. Mao Li took him to a tent, which made Zhao Wei excited because he had never expected to have a tent all by himself. But Mao Li laughed mischievously, telling him that only he in the entire camp had a private tent and then wished him good luck to stay alive which made our boy nervous, asking the dude what he was talking about. Mao Li simply replied, telling him he had to be responsible for his actions. Then he leaned closer and asked Zhou Wei if he enjoyed the feeling after grabbing the commander's melons. Our boy turned red and responded that it was indeed great, but immediately regained his senses and shouted that it wasn't on purpose. He began to wonder if the commander wanted revenge but felt it should be a truce since she also saw him naked back in the washroom. That moment, Zhao Wei heard Commander Shang Wen's voice scream behind him, which nearly crippled his nervous system. The soldier, who was also anxious, quickly excused himself that he needed to attend to some matters, leaving Zhao Wei alone. Our boy began to sweat bullets because Shang Wen heard everything he said. Shang Wen, blazing with fury, asked Zhao Wei what rubbish he was talking about her seeing him naked. Zhu Wei, who already peed his pants, tried to explain that it was a misunderstanding as she had heard wrong. But Shang Wen was already pissed to oblivion and concluded that she would need to teach him a lesson. With that, she ordered him to stand on attention and then brought out a whip to give him ten lashes for slandering superiors. Zhou Wei's eyes opened wide in astonishment that he was getting whipped on his first day. Shang Wen then ordered him to turn around, which Zhou Wei obeyed but cried, begging her to go easy on him since he was a pathetic weakling with a fragile Hearing this, Shang Wen stared at him with disgust and without wasting time, lashed his rear in frustration. Our boy immediately crashed on the ground, holding his behind, pretending to cry from the intense pain of the whip. Shang Wen stared at him in surprise, wondering how it could be that painful since she didn't even use the full strength of her heavenly energy to whip him. Seeing him cry profusely, she wondered if Zhou Wei was as weak as he claimed. With that, she had compassion for him and decided to let him go since he couldn't handle a beating. She then informed him that the remaining nine whips would be administered later, and then asked if he had learned his lesson. Zhu Wei turned, telling her he had learned his lesson indeed, and thanked her for her generosity. Shang Wen then asked how he could even qualify to be a soldier, with him being as weak as a sissy. 
With that, she informed him that she would personally train him after lunch on some set of strengthening exercises. But our boy didn't hear a word, she said as he was entranced by how pretty she was up close. However, Shang Wen left, telling him she would find him later after lunch, not after informing him that if he didn't meet her expectations, then he would have to be sent out of the battalion to prevent him from bringing disgrace to the squad honor. As she left, Zhu Wei saluted her and began to ponder how kind Shang Wen was compared to his fiancée, who was as bitter as your ex. Several hours later, the soldiers lined up for lunch. Zhu Wei cried in excitement because he had never expected the food to be this delicious compared to the garbage his old man had fed him at home. His father, Zhao Shuan, was a top member of the society who lived a simple life. That was why he fed him only two vegetables and a soup daily. However, our boy ate his fill and was overly joyous, muttering to himself that joining the army was the best decision he had ever made in his life. Just then, he sighted a figure approaching him from a distance, and it turned out to be Commander Shang Wen. Seeing her, he couldn't help but imagine what life would be like if such a beauty was his babe who stayed by his side. However, he snapped out of it immediately because he assumed a hot top-tier chick like her would never settle for an ugly monkey like him. With that, he waved at Shang Wen, who told him that with the way he was smiling he sure enjoyed his lunch. Zhu Wei responded that he had a few bowls and the meal in the barracks was bussing. After this, Shang Wen put up a serious face and asked him if his morning act was all pretense when she whipped him without using her heavenly energy. Zhu Wei flatly denied it, telling her it wasn't an act and that he could still feel the hurt in his behind, but Shang Wen felt he was capping all the way. However, she showed him a marching sandbag and tossed it at him. But it instantly fell to the ground because Zhou Wei could not bear the sandbag's weight, crying because it was so heavy. He then asked what the sandbag was for, and Shang Wen, irritated, replied that it was a 20 kilograms sandbag, obviously meant for his training. Hearing this, Zhou Wei was taken aback and exclaimed that the sandbag was intense, even for training. Shang Wen responded, pointing out that his strength and speed as an archer were well below the standard. Zhu Wei retorted that all an archer really needed was an accurate shot, prompting Shang Wen to ask if he could, indeed, shoot accurately. Zhu Wei nodded confidently. With that, she challenged him to take up a bow, saying if he could shoot better than her, he wouldn't have to undergo any special training. They headed into the woods, where Shang Wen pointed to a tree 200 meters away and told him to aim for the center of its trunk. Zhu Wei gazed at the distant tree with uncertainty, doubting if he could even hit it directly. He readied himself, focused on the target, aimed, then drew back the bowstring and released. His arrow hit the trunk, and he was thrilled with the result, but Shang Wen remained unimpressed. She silently acknowledged that it wasn't a bad hit. After all, she hadn't expected Zhou Wei to perform at a captain's level in archery. However, she decided not to inflate his ego. She told him that the shot wasn't perfect, since it missed the center of the trunk as instructed. She then remarked that she could do even better, accurately hitting the target with just her feet. Zhu Wei, in disbelief, dared her to use her feet. Shang Wen shot him a cold look, took the bow, and performed a handstand, gripping the bow with her legs. Zhu Wei was dumbfounded, breaking into a cold sweat. He hadn't imagined she'd actually shoot using her legs. Meanwhile, Shang Wen focused intensely on the target, grasping the arrow firmly between her feet. With precision, she released it, striking the tree trunk center. Rising with an air of confidence, she asked Zhao Wei if he was convinced. But Zhao Wei, blushing and with a nosebleed, had caught a glimpse of her heavenly paradise in fork during her pose. Enraged, Shang Wen yelled, calling him a cultured creep with a filthy mind, and ordered him to grab the sandbags and run laps around the camp, no stopping until she said so. Zhao Wei immediately took off running, with Shang Wen trailing behind barking at him to speed up and stop running as if he just had BBL surgery. After an hour of intense running, Zhu Wei had exhausted, asked for a break, but Shang Wen insisted he kept going. He then noticed the red jewels hovering around her hands, wondering if they were heavenly jewels since they were larger than the ones Princess Difuya wore. Shang Wen saw him staring and snapped, asking what he was looking at. Zhu Wei asked if the jewels were fire-attributed heavenly jewels and Shang Wen replied that she'd explain if he ran faster. Hearing this, he protested, begging her to tell him as he was worn out. Shang Wen smirked, revealing both hands adorned with physical and heavenly jewels, shocking Zhou Wei. She explained that the difference lay in their colors. Physical jewels boosted her agility, while her elemental jewel wasn't fire-attributed, but the rare red tourmaline, which controlled wind. 
She added that heavenly jewels were generally high-grade and often more potent than others. At that, Zhou Wei asked if a lower heavenly master was stronger than a middle-level mental or physical master. Shang Wen confirmed that while heavenly jewel masters had more sheer power, they also faced greater challenges in cultivating their energies. She further shared that while there were plenty of physical jewel masters, she'd never heard of a heavenly jewel master reaching the pinnacle. According to legend, the most powerful heavenly jewel master didn't stop at nine jewels but could cultivate until each hand had twelve jewels hovering round it, defying the laws of nature and having the power to alter anything in the world. This revelation left Zhou Wei dumbfounded because with twelve jewels in each hand, there was a total of twenty-four jewels. He instantly remembered his old man, who had eight jewels in each hand and thought he must truly be very powerful, making him a disgrace even to be called his son. He then inquired about Zhao Shui, his father from Shangwen, if the old man was indeed strong. Shangwen responded by telling him that the old man was a middle jewel master, so he was really strong, and that was why she looked up to him. She added that the old man was counted among the strongest in the boundless mainland, and the attributes of his jewel were among the top four. With the way she spoke about his old man with admiration, Zhou Wei knew she was a fangirl, so he sheepishly asked why she didn't become the old man's daughter-in-law. This startled Shang Wen, who shouted at him, asking why he was spitting errant nonsense since she wasn't worthy to be the commander-in-chief's son's waifu. In an outburst, she punched him in the face and threatened to remove his baby-making device if he spoke such nonsense again. She then stared at him and noticed our boy wasn't moving, so she kicked him to stop faking death and continue running. Just then, she noticed he had passed out, so she helped him up and wondered how one man could be such an invalid to pass out from a single blow. Meanwhile, at the commander-in-chief's residence, Zhao Shui welcomed the emperor and handed him the letter he received from Zhou Wei that morning. After reading the letter, the emperor still couldn't believe Zhou Wei was alive and thought the old man was just covering the death of his son just to console him. However, Zhao Shui, with his criminal face, assured the emperor that the letter was genuine and he shouldn't be fooled by his son, who knew he was in a lot of trouble, and decided not to return home out of fear of facing him. But the emperor replied that he would continue to be bothered as long as Zhu Wei was not back home. After that, Zhao Shui suggested that they call off the engagement just like Zhao Wei had requested because the filthy weakling was not worthy of the princess. Hearing this, the emperor protested and pointed out that if the engagement were broken off, they wouldn't be counted as true brothers. However, Zhao Shu remarked that the matter was settled and shouldn't be discussed further. Later that night, at the barracks, Zhou Wei slept on his bed and just then, his eyes suddenly opened, wondering if he had passed out. His muscles ached painfully, and he muttered that Shang Wen was vicious for putting him through such grueling training. But then he caught the scent of something delicious. Turning, he noticed a bowl of food left by Shang Wen. Spotting pieces of meat inside, he quickly took back his complaints. Delighted, he stuffed his mouth with the food but suddenly noticed a slip of paper beside the bowl. It read that training would continue the next day, prompting him to groan, realizing there was no escape. He grumbled that all he'd done was touch her chesticles, and surely she could touch his pee, pee in return to even the score. Afterwards, Zhou Wei lit a candle, unwrapped his oilcloth-wrapped book, and prepared to begin cultivating. Opening the book, he spotted a disclaimer warning that those lacking willpower shouldn't attempt the practice. A bead of sweat formed as he read it, but he pushed through, knowing that if he didn't cultivate before turning 16, he'd be doomed to remain trash. The thought of Princess Tafuya's earlier scorn flickered in his mind as she rejected him as worthless, and he felt a renewed determination to get stronger. He recalled Shang Wen's admiration for his father's strength, realizing he had to do everything possible to become a heavenly jewel master like him. According to the book, he'd need to unlock 36 acupuncture points in his body before he could awaken his power jewel. With fierce determination, he resolved to do just that because failure meant he'd be nothing but a waste. He vowed that, after mastering cultivation, he'd grow so strong that the princess herself would beg to marry him, only for him to reject her in turn. With that, he began his cultivation, a bright aura forming around him, as he promised himself that all those who looked down on him would one day see him in a new light. He sat cross-legged like a monk, focusing intently on the instructions in the book. According to its guidance, beginning cultivation required him to direct his awareness to the acupuncture point on his left clavicle. To achieve this, he pressed on the end until it felt numb. Knowing that the first breakthrough would be crucial, Zhao Wei began cultivating with intense concentration, 
fully aware he had to endure this initial challenge. With fierce focus, he channeled his energy to try and unlock the clavicle acupuncture point. Hours passed and frustration began to creep in as he failed to detect any sign of internal heavenly energy, leaving him to wonder if he was truly destined to be a loser, forever unable to cultivate. Just as he was about to give up, he felt a sudden surge of powerful heavenly energy deep within his core. Excited, he focused on guiding the energy up toward his clavicle. With immense effort, he managed to pull the energy toward his right shoulder. But at that moment, an excruciating pain struck him, unlike anything he'd ever felt before. He screamed as the pain took over, paralyzing his entire body and causing him to cough up blood. Desperately, he struggled to withstand the overwhelming agony, and after what felt like an eternity, the pain finally began to subside. Weakly, he wondered if he had succeeded in initiating his cultivation. But then, his vision started to blur, and he realized he was gradually losing consciousness. Suddenly, an immense surge of energy erupted within Zhou Wei, forcing a scream of agony from him. The energy radiated from a black jewel deep within his core, chillingly cold and powerful. This intense energy immediately impacted his right clavicle, surrounding his body with a dark, potent aura. In that moment, the black jewel began to glow within his abdomen, causing his muscles to swell. Just then, he sensed a faint consciousness within the jewel and wondered what it might be. His eyes widened as he realized it was a black tiger. In an instant, the tiger materialized, letting out a fierce, terrifying roar. Meanwhile in her tent, Shangwen was meditating when her eyes flew open, sensing a familiar cold aura. Thrilled, she assumed that someone within the camp had awakened a heavenly master jewel and rushed outside. Upon stepping out, she was stunned to realize the aura was coming from Zhu Wei's tent and hurried over to check. As she neared his tent, she felt a sudden, intense wave of energy and wondered if his elemental attribute could be darkness, one of the most powerful attributes. With a mixture of curiosity and caution, she peeked inside and was utterly shocked by the sight before her. Zhu Wei's body was covered in black markings, giving him the appearance of a wild, feral beast. Shangguan stayed at the entrance scared and continued to stare at Zhu Wei, wondering what was happening to him. On the other hand, Zhao Wei looked at her frighteningly without making any move. After a while of staring, Shangguan trudged forward towards him, with all the fear in the world while Zhou Wei, still overwhelmed with the dark evil aura, didn't blink an eye but focused his attention on her. That moment, Shangguan became really scared and began to cry because she remembered vividly a legend about a heavenly master whose awakening would emit a similar strong uncontrollable aura and would require a sacrificial offering before he eventually became calm. However, before she could react, Zhao Wei pulled a move from Fifty Shades of Grey, pinning her to the ground with overwhelming strength while she tearfully begged him to regain his consciousness. Our boy just laughed manically like a crazed man and then grabbed a hold of her dress, savagely ripping it off her body. Just then, his eyes glowed and he stared intently at her jiggle physics, calmly while she tried to cover her glory from his cultured eyes, still weeping for him to regain consciousness. In that moment, he reached for her neck, squeezing tightly as his gaze held a chilling, murderous intent like a deranged predator. She struggled desperately, pleading with him to release her, but Zhu Wei only stared at her with an unyielding darkness in his eyes. Her breath became ragged as he choked the life out of her, and just as she seemed on the brink of losing consciousness, a flash of clarity returned to his eyes. With a fierce roar of defiance, he regained control over himself. He instantly released her, gasping as a stabbing pain surged through his head, like countless needles piercing his brain. Confused, he wondered what was happening. His scream echoed as the black jewel in his core emitted a powerful glow, breaking through every barrier his body had against absorbing heavenly energy. His body underwent a complete transformation as all impurities were purged, and he was reborn. His heavenly jewel materialized, hovering around his hands as his awakening ended. The black aura dissipated and the dark markings faded from his skin. Moments later, Zhao Wei collapsed from exhaustion, falling into unconsciousness, cushioned by the softness of Shang Wen's chest pillows. He woke up almost immediately, clutching his head in intense pain as the black tiger roared inside him. However, suddenly, everything calmed down, and he was himself again. With that, Zhao Wei examined his body surprised that he was alive, and then noticed the hot, unclad beauty lying in front of him. He immediately had a cardiac arrest, and his nose began to bleed because he had never seen such a sight in all his life. So the foolish monkey tried to cover his eyes in the name of being decent, 
but the innate instinct of a man would not let his eyes close. Just then, Shang Wen, who had regained consciousness, stared at him in shock. She instantly jumped up and covered her melons from his cultured eyes. Our boy became petrified begging her to chill that he had also regained his senses just now and had absolutely no reason what she was even doing inside his tent. Shang Wen suddenly remembered the intense workout session when he was still overwhelmed by the dark aura, and without wasting time, she grabbed a hold of an arrow from a quiver and threatened to send him to his maker. Zhou Wei stared at the arrow, and in a blink of an eye, unconsciously retreated backwards with speed faster than flash. He became stunned and wondered how he could pull such a stunt that fast. Just then, he suddenly noticed the heavenly jewels floating around his hands and felt a surge of excitement that he'd finally awakened his power jewels. Meanwhile, Shang Wen saw the jewels too and was stunned. The disgusting weakling she'd known had actually awakened as a heavenly jewel master. Zhu Wei then tried to recall the events of the night, remembering how he'd been overtaken by the Black Tiger's presence, consumed by a fierce bloodlust. As he pieced it together, he realized he must have attacked Shang Wen in that state. He noticed the bruises on her neck and the torn pieces of her melon cover on the ground, making him wonder if he'd caused all this damage. With genuine remorse, Zhao Wei apologized, pleading for her forgiveness and explaining that he hadn't been in control. He promised to take responsibility and care for her forever. But Shang Wen was far from pacified. Anger flared in her eyes as she gripped the arrow tightly, threatening to end him. Zhu Wei, filled with regret, simply told her to do whatever would make her feel better. At his words, Shang Wen's eyes widened and tears streamed down her face as she dropped the arrow, overcome with emotion, realizing she couldn't bring herself to hurt him. Zhu Wei then lowered himself to his knees, his apology heartfelt as he faced her. Shang Wen then wiped her tears, wondering why she had to be the sacrifice and even get her plots violated. However, she muttered to herself that since Zhou Wei had awakened to be a heavenly jewel master, she couldn't just end his existence simply because he got a free subscription to her on Lifens. She knew attributed bloodlust wasn't easy to control, but Zhou Wei had managed to control himself and shouldn't be held responsible for what he couldn't control. With that, she resolved to accept her fate for the sake of the Empire, which would definitely benefit from the addition of another heavenly jewel master. However, she warned Zhao Wei never to spill to anyone what had just happened or meet his demise, to which, without hesitation, he swore to take the secret to his grave. After a momentary pause, the dumb simp asked if Shang Wen would accept his offer of letting him take care of her for the rest of his life, and for that, he received a fine kick to his jaw with Shang Wen, telling him to take care of the devil in hell. She then ordered him out of the tent for saying nonsense so she could get dressed. Shortly afterwards, she covered herself with a robe, and then asked Zhou Wei to return to the tent. While inside, she asked to see the kind of heavenly jewel he had awakened. So Zhou Wei stretched his left hand, and as she stared at it, she was taken aback when she realized it was a red Alexandrite cat's eye jewel. She explained that an Alexandrite is a heavenly jewel possessed by only a heavenly jewel master with strong elemental attributes, which grants the user the possibility of having multiple elemental attributes. Hearing this revelation, our boy was thrilled and asked if he now possessed more than two elemental attributes. Shang Wen responded that the Alexandrite jewel was a rare one and when it appeared, the master usually possessed more than four elemental attributes. This shocked Zhu Wei, who never believed the jewel possessed such immense powers, while Shang Wen stared at him in disbelief that he awakened such a powerful heavenly jewel. Meanwhile, Zhao Wei was overjoyed at this discovery, because with this, no one would ever call him Thrash ever again. Shang Wen then asked Zhao Wei how he could have possibly awakened his heavenly jewel overnight. Before he could answer, she picked up the Immortal Technique book and remarked that even if he had practiced the techniques inside, it would be nearly impossible to awaken a heavenly jewel in a single night. Zhao Wei was stunned to see she had found his secret book. With no other option, he'd explained that while playing in the forest outside the city, a rift suddenly opened in the sky, revealing a black jewel. The jewel instantly entered his body, sending a chill through him until he blacked out. He added that this black jewel was what enabled him to awaken his heavenly jewel so quickly. When he asked if Shang Wen knew anything about the black jewel, she simply stared at him intently, ignoring his question. After a pause, she instructed him to rest and stay inside the tent until she allowed otherwise. When Zhou Wei asked why, she replied that since he couldn't conceal his heavenly jewel and would attract assassins from rival empires. Zhu Wei nodded in obedience, feeling touched at despite everything. Shang Wen still cared for his safety. She then bid him goodnight 
and he found himself staring at her moderate Kiat, more determined than ever to stay by her side. Yet, he couldn't shake the thrill of having seen her fully exposed melons, feeling the night couldn't possibly get better. Glancing at her torn clothing, he decided to keep a piece as a reminder. Shortly after, Zhao Li sat cross-legged on the floor to meditate, realizing that his shoulder had opened and all four of his primary acupuncture points had been activated. Satisfied, he lay down on the ground, feeling content and ready for a good rest. The following day, Zhao Wei slept all through like a lazy sloth, drooling and snoring like a pig. Later that night, he was jerked out of slumberland by Shang Wen, who yelled at him that he deserved a spot in the afterlife for sleeping like a hibernating bear. Zhu Wei stood up from the ground like a sissy and begged to sleep some more, but Shang Wen screamed at him to get up and then began to wonder if training the idiot to cultivate was even worth it. After that, she asked with all seriousness for his origin, because she could only teach him to develop if she knew his background. Hearing this, Zhou Wei knew he could never tell her the truth about his background or else his old man would take him back. So he explained that he couldn't divulge his origin because he ran away from home to join the army, but he was certainly a citizen of the kingdom. He explained further that he ran away because his father saw him as a disappointment and treated him worse than garbage, so he joined the army to make a name for himself. Upon hearing this, Shang Wen stared at him and concluded it would not be a problem training him to cultivate since he was a kingdom citizen. However, she pointed out that there were three terms he had to agree to before she commenced the training. One, he would be loyal to the empire no matter how strong he became. He would also swear always to be part of the empire and never betray it, to which our guy agreed. Secondly, he was never to reveal to anyone that he was a heavenly master, except during life or death situations. Zhu Wei wasn't cool with the second condition and asked what was the essence of training when he was not allowed to use his powers. Shang Wen responded sternly that he would meet his demise faster than Luffy finishing a bowl of food if the other empires learned about his powers. So until he became strong, he was to conceal his powers. To which Zhao Wei agreed and smiled at the thought that Shang Wen genuinely cared for him. Shang Wen then revealed the final condition. No matter how powerful Zhou Wei became, he was never to force her to accept him. Hearing this, Zhao Wei felt a surge of anger and couldn't understand why she'd say that since he wasn't some creep who would force a woman to be with him. Fueled by frustration, he swore he'd never make her do anything against her will, leaving Shang Wen momentarily stunned. Deep down, she knew the oath might sting his pride, but given her role as his sacrifice, she didn't want to leave anything to chance. With that settled, she began his cultivation training. Zhu Wei learned eagerly, focusing with such dedication that his interest only grew. Observing his intense concentration, Shang Wen realized he was a changed person, and with his status as a heavenly jewel master, he might truly stand a chance with her one day. The thought flustered her, and her cheeks grew red with embarrassment. Zhu Wei noticed and asked if she was all right. Embarrassed, she let out a small cough and told him the lesson was over for the day. Before leaving, she encouraged him to keep practicing, assuring him she'd be close by to keep him safe. These words filled Zhou Wei with excitement. Knowing the prettiest girl was watching over him like a hawk was exhilarating. His enthusiasm spiked, and he resolved to put everything he'd learned into practice that night. Starting with his physical jewel, he channeled his heavenly energy into it. Instantly, the jewel glowed with a brilliant silvery white light, and his muscles surged with strength. He let out an intense yell as his physique transformed, his muscles bulking up and becoming more ripped than Giga Chad, leaving him feeling stronger than ever. His muscles, bones, and meridian became filled with incredible energy, and he felt like the strongest man alive and could defeat even Thanos. So he stared at his physical jewel and was amazed at how steadily his body absorbed his heavenly energy to become strong. With that, he decided to try out his elemental jewel. Just as he activated it, the red jewel began to glow, and as he stared curiously, a wheel-shaped item with six parts and a pointer appeared before him. Shocked, he wondered what it was, and after much brooding, his brain finally clicked, and he figured it was the six attributes in his elemental jewel. With that, he decided to try out the cyan-colored attribute first. That moment, a powerful blue aura filled the tent. His body became lighter, and he figured it must be the wind attribute. So he decided to try the power of the attribute by jumping, and as he jumped, he leaped high, almost like Hank Thunderman, and broke through the tent's roof. After that, he tried out the blue-colored attribute, and then he moved the pointer to it. He felt an intense electrifying spark in his hands, which made him realize that it was his thunder attribute. 
He then moved to the silver-colored attribute, and an intense wind filled the room, but it quickly dissipated and transformed into a soft silver needle, which only consumed his heavenly energy, but nothing changed. After which, he moved the pointer to the dark-colored attribute, and a dark ominous cloud filled the room, making him figure it was the darkness attributes. After testing these attributes, Zhao Wei was delighted that out of the four great attributes, he possessed two of them. So he decided to test out the gray-colored part of the wheel, and was petrified when he was consumed by a bloody aura, and hurriedly tried to switch it off. At that moment, Zhao Wei's heavenly energy drained instantly, leaving him dizzy, and he blacked out completely. When he finally opened his eyes, he was met with an intense headache and decided he wouldn't be using the gray attribute again anytime soon, given how much energy it consumed. Determined to recover his strength, he resumed meditating but before long, the lazy soul grew tired and ended up dozing off, sleeping soundly through the night. The next morning, he was abruptly jolted awake by the sound of his name being called. He scrambled to his feet and saw Mao Li, who called him a lazy soldier in need of discipline and ordered him up. Mao Li then told him to get dressed as Shang Wen was summoning him. At the mention of his crush, Zhou Wei immediately broke into a grin. Together, he and Mao Li headed to the commander's tent, where he was brought before Shang Wan. She turned and welcomed him, and the love-struck Zhou Wei practically melted. But his excitement was cut short when his eyes landed on a fine-looking gentleman standing behind her. His face turned green, not Hulk green, but with envy, as he wondered who this gorgeous face was. However, Shang Wen informed him that from that moment on, he would be her personal aide. Hearing this, Zhou Wei was thrilled by the thought of being by her side 2-4-7, blushed with excitement, and accepted the position without a second thought. But the pretty boy objected, which infuriated Zhou Wei, who wondered what in the world was wrong with the guy. Shang Wen, however, turned to him and addressed him as Captain Xiao, asking if he had an issue with her decision. Xiao replied, explaining that her work was crucial and that Zhou Wei simply wasn't suited for such a role. Shang Wen calmly assured him that she didn't need protection from her personal aid, and then asked whom he'd recommend instead. Zhou insisted that Zhou Wei was just a beginner with only basic archery skills, making him practically useless in battle. Not stopping there, he even offered to resign as captain to take on the role himself, leaving Zhou Wei glaring at the guy's shamelessness. Shang Wen, however, turned him down gently, saying she couldn't allow him to quit as captain since he was the battalion's pillar of strength. Moreover, she expressed her confidence in Zhou Wei's archery skills, having tested them herself, which made Zhou Wei smile. Despite her response, Xiao stubbornly suggested that Zhou Wei demonstrate his archery abilities to put everyone's doubts to rest. Seeing his persistence, Shang Wen agreed and encouraged Zhou Wei to proceed. Xiao immediately brought out his Purple Dawn Bao, an expensive old stairwood model only the wealthy could afford. He challenged Zhou Wei to draw its string with all his strength, declaring that only then would he be fit to be Shang Wen's aid. Zhao Wei took the bow without hesitation and, confident from years of training with similar bows under his father, activated his physical jewel and drew the string effortlessly. Xiao's eyes nearly bulged out in shock while Shang Wen smiled approvingly. But Zhou Wei wasn't done. He was determined to teach the low-budget Caitlyn Jenner a lesson. So, using just his two fingers, he elongated the string further backwards, snapping it in the process. Feigning surprise at the broken bow, Zhao Wei commented that it must not have been strong enough, as he hadn't even used his full strength. Xiao stood there, torn between anger and disbelief, struggling to understand what kind of person Zhao Wei was. Meanwhile, Shang Wen smirked, asking Xiao if he had any further objections, while Zhao Wei flashed a smug grin. Furious, Xiao left in a huff, Afterwards, Shang Wen led Zhou Wei to the secluded star forest. With no one around, Zhou Wei couldn't help but jokingly ask if she was planning to send him to the afterlife. Ignoring his antics, Shang Wen instead asked if he had fully linked with his heavenly jewels, considering his strength with the bow. Zhou Wei nodded, explaining he'd figured it out the previous night. Impressed, Shang Wen admitted it had taken her five days to link with hers. She then asked him about the attributes of his elemental jewel, and he listed them, wind, lightning, darkness, spatial, and a final mysterious attribute with an evil aura. Shocked, Shang Wen remarked that he had the devil's luck to have five attributes, two of which were high-level ones. She then informed him that she'd brought him to the forest to begin his training. She explained that a heavenly jewel's attributes weren't primarily meant for offensive attacks, which left Zhou Wei surprised, as he'd seen other jewel masters use their powers in battle. Shang Wen clarified that, at his beginner level, 
His jewel's powers weren't yet suitable for combat. Then, to start the training, she demonstrated her elemental powers, forming a glowing arrow with her fingers. She fitted the glowing arrow onto her bow as Zhu Wei asked if it was crafted from her physical jewel. In response, she drew the bow and told him to watch closely. The arrow shot off into the distance, and Zhu Wei was shocked. Not only was it incredibly fast, but it was completely silent. It even zigzagged between trees and curved through the sky, leaving Zhao Wei utterly stunned. He wondered how she could control it so skillfully, and Shang Wen explained that this move was her first jewel manifestation, known as the Silent Vector Tracking Arrow. She added that through a specific technique, he too could channel his energy into weapons and armor, which piqued Zhu Wei's curiosity. When he asked how she achieved this, Shang Wen mentioned that it required a rare and costly scroll, which kept many masters from manifesting simply because they couldn't afford it. Zhu Wei grinned, knowing money wasn't an issue. His father was wealthy from working with the emperor. Seeing his confidence, Shang Wen asked what kind of equipment he'd manifest if he could. Zhu Wei said he'd like a full suit of armor, armored to the teeth. Displeased, Shang Wen called him a boring dweeb. As Zhu Wei tried to explain, Shang Wen cut him off and moved on with the training, revealing her first elemental jewel manifestation, wind blades. Shang Wen then set her sights on a nearby tree, and the sheer power of her wind blades demolished it, leaving only a stump behind. She explained that obtaining a stored skill for an elemental jewel was difficult, as it required abilities from heavenly beasts. For this, most people turned to the inscription palace to have their elemental jewels inscribed. She then advised Zhou Weed to choose skills compatible with his own attributes. Wrapping up the training session, Shang Wen told Zhou Wei to be ready to leave the barracks with her the following day. Zhu Wei, feeling love smitten, asked if they'd be going out together and what they'd be doing. Shang Wen frowned and warned the hopeless romantic to be mindful of his words. The next morning, Zhou Wei met Shang Wen early, asking about their destination. She gave him a cryptic answer before breaking into a run, instructing him to use his wind attribute to keep up with her, as they had a long way to go in limited time. Zhu Wei pushed himself to match her pace, gradually catching up as they ran swiftly. Noticing his improved speed, Shang Wen was impressed, though it took him some time to close the gap. After half a day of running, Shang Wen stopped for a break, munching on bread. Zhou Wei's stomach rumbled at the sight, and the glutton asked for a bite. She refused, scolding him for neglecting to bring his dried rations. Shortly afterwards, Zhao Wei managed to catch a rabbit for lunch, but seeing how terrified it was, Shang Wen shouted at him to release the poor creature. Though Zhu Wei protested, Shang Wen insisted she wouldn't stand by while he took the life of the helpless animal. Given her orders, he reluctantly let the rabbit go grumbling as he went off to search for another food source. Later, he returned with a handful of bamboo shoots and began preparing a broth. At the same time, Shang Wen watched in surprise, wondering how he'd honed such impressive survival skills despite claiming to come from a wealthy family. Within minutes, Zhao Wei whipped up a delicious soup like a seasoned chef and presented it to Shang Wen. She was immediately taken aback by his culinary skills and Zhao Wei couldn't help but smile at her astonishment. Offering her a taste, the jewel master didn't hesitate to dig in. The soup was so incredible that she declared it the best she'd ever tasted. Eager for more, she begged for another serving, but Zhou Wei skillfully bargained for a trade. Satisfied after eating her fill, Shang Wen's view of Zhou Wei shifted. Now considering him a valuable companion to bring along on all her outings, especially with his hidden talents as a skilled chef. Zhao Wei was happy to cook for Shang Wen, which she ate and enjoyed greatly while the useless simp just stared at her in delight, watching her eat happily. He took advantage of her happiness to ask about their destination, and Shang Wen finally disclosed that they were heading for the Cliff City. Hearing this, Zhou Wei was shocked and wondered why they didn't take the carriage, considering the distance. Shang Gan replied, telling him it was expensive to use the carriage, and they needed to save because they would spend a lot when they got to their destination. She further informed him that their city had no manifestation scroll or inscribing palace, but the Cliff City had both, and that was the reason they were headed there to help him manifest. Zhao Wei then sought her advice on the best skill to manifest, considering that his elemental jewel must hold many inscriptions. Shang Gan responded telling him elemental inscription skills were expensive to purchase even if they found the one suited for him. With that, they finished dinner and continued on their way. Before long, the duo finally arrived at the Flying Cliff City. Upon entering the vast city, their first stop was the skill-storing palace to acquire formal robes. As they stepped inside, 
Shang Wen quickly cautioned Zhao Wei not to reveal his elemental jewel, but only his physical jewel if proof of his heavenly jewel was requested. Just then, a female attendant approached, asking about their purpose. Shang Wen explained that she was there for a promotion and Zhou Wei was there for registration. The attendant requested proof of their heavenly jewels, so Shang Wen complied by stating her name and displaying her physical jewel. Zhu Wei showed his physical jewel and stated his age, surprising Shang Wen. He quickly added that he would be turning 14 in two months, making her realize the brain dead had lied about his age to join the army. Zhao Wei soon completed his registration, receiving a plaque and a robe from the skill storing palace. As they headed off to find a skilled consolidation equipment master, Zhou Wei wore the robe, imagining he looked like a prince charming. Shang Guan immediately cut him off, telling him to stop acting silly and keep up. She warned him that the masters they were about to meet had short tempers, so he should avoid any foolish antics. Eventually, they arrived at a wooden cottage nestled in the forest. Shang Wen knocked, asking for Hu Yan, but instead, an ugly weirdo appeared, congratulating her on her promotion. Shang Wen then addressed the weirdo as Wind and asked to see Hu Yan. Wind informed Shang Wen that the miserly old man was in and hoped she had brought enough money. He led them inside the wooden cottage, where they came face to face with a short, disgusting, fat old man with large coonhound ears. They greeted Hu Yan, but he skipped the formalities and jumped straight into business displaying the available equipment scrolls and their prices with a swipe of his finger. Zhu Wei's eyes lit up as he spotted a durable shield. Noticing his interest, Shang Wen muttered to herself, wondering why he favored defensive gear so much as if he feared death itself. She then told Hu Yan she was interested in a bow. The old man frowned, reminding her that she wasn't an agility type and couldn't realistically use it. Shang Wen clarified that the bow was for her friend and asked for the price. The scummy old man replied that the bow cost 200,000 gold coins, which left them both stunned, as even a Tesla truck would cost less. When Zhou Wei inquired about the shield's price, Shang Wen quickly hushed him, telling him the bow suited him better. She offered to make a 150,000 gold coin deposit and promised the rest within days, but the old miser refused, ordering Wen to throw them out. As the old man turned to leave, Zhou Wei stepped forward pleading for a bit of leniency since they had traveled a long way. His plea only angered the old man, who glared at him in disgust and raised the price to 300,000 gold coins. Frustrated Zhou Wei remarked that he didn't need to be short and ruthless, pointing out that a relationship with them might benefit him in the future. In response, the old man coldly increased the price to 400,000 coins, further infuriating Zhou Wei. At that moment, Shang Wen intervened, telling Zhou Wei to stop talking since his negotiation skills were terrible. She then offered Hu Yan a spirit jade worth 50,000 gold coins, promising to return with the remaining funds. However, the old man refused, stating that although the jade was valuable, he had already raised the price and wouldn't return on his word. Hearing this, Zhou Wei's temper flared. He insulted the old man, calling him a monumental loser with a chihuahua face. Hu Yan, unfazed, hiked the price up to 500,000 coins, no more and no less. Seething with rage, Zhou Wei clenched his fists, tempted to punch the old man. Hu Yan scoffed that many had wanted to end him, yet he was still alive and well. He warned Zhou Wei that before he could try, he'd have to get past Wind, a physical jewel master. Zhou Wei's eyes burned with fury as the old man finished speaking, but Wind advised him to let it go, suggesting that the old man was unreasonable. Ignoring the advice, Zhou Wei's clenched fist began to glow, and as his anger intensified, his entire body became enveloped in a bright aura, shocking the old man. In that instant, Zhou Wei's red elemental jewel appeared, alarming Shang Wen, though Hu Yan had already noticed it. Shang Wen quickly tried to defuse the situation, apologizing and saying they would leave. However, Hu Yan, now in a calmer tone, asked why Zhou Wei hadn't mentioned earlier that he possessed a greater attribute jewel. If he had, Hu Yan might have offered a discount. Shang Wen replied that, even with a discount, they couldn't afford the item. The short old man then explained that, while he valued money, he also had principles. He added that equipment masters typically required spatial attributes, and among the greater attributes, spatial was one of the rarest. Equipment scroll creation had only a 1% success rate, even for spatial jewel masters, but as a heavenly jewel master, Zhu Wei had the potential to reach even higher levels. Zhu Wei then asked if Hu Yan wanted him as a disciple, to which Hu Yan replied that, 
as his disciple equipment scroll prices would always be negotiable. Furthermore, they could pay an initial amount of 150,000 gold coins for the equipment scroll. Sheng Wen's eyes widened with excitement, but Zhou Wei flatly declined. Wu Yan's frustration rose, and he reluctantly lowered the price to 100,000 gold coins. Zhu Wei refused again, saying he'd never seen a master too stingy to gift his disciple anything. Perplexed, the old man finally agreed to give him the bow as a gift. Seeing his chance for payback, Zhu Wei coolly informed Wu Yan that they didn't actually have any money and that financial struggles were part of why they joined the skill storing palace. Sweat started beating on Hu Yan's brow as he tried to persuade them against joining the skill storing palace, warning that doing so would tie them to the Feili Empire. But Zhou Wei, playing coy, replied that as long as they were employed by the skill storing palace, they would be supplied with equipment scrolls. He then offered to leave for the palace and let Hu Yan sell the bow to someone else. Desperate, the old miser shouted after them, pleading for them to stay and offered to throw in a wielding boot along with the overlord bow. A few minutes later, Hu Yan returned with two wooden boxes containing the scrolls and reluctantly handed them to Zhu Wei and Shang Wen. He then directed Wen to take them to a side room where the consolidation would begin. Shang Wen was thrilled when she received her box, as she hadn't been able to afford even one equipment scroll before, and now she was getting two for free. Still in disbelief, she glanced at Zhu Wei, who gave her a wink. She realized that while he appeared innocent, he was impressively cunning. Following that, Wind instructed them to use separate rooms to avoid any attribute clashes during the consolidation process. Shang Wen then headed to one room while Wind escorted Zhu Wei to another, planning to guide him through his first consolidation. Wind instructed Zhou Wei to sit on the ground and open the wooden box. Inside, Zhou Wei found numerous scrolls. Wind explained that there were 100 scrolls for the Overlord Bao, as each had only a 1% success rate, meaning that just one would actually work. To begin consolidating, Wen told Zhou Wei to place his right hand on the scroll, activate his heavenly energy, and direct it toward his physical jewel. However, he cautioned that only one scroll could be used daily, as each attempt consumed 50% of heavenly energy. Zhou Wei carefully followed his instructions, placing his hand on the scroll, activating his heavenly energy, and revealing his silver physical jewel. The scroll then glowed brightly before vanishing into his physical jewel. The physical jewel quickly began drawing in heavenly energy, and Zhu Wei's elemental roulette appeared, leaving him utterly stunned. The roulette spun between the black and gray attributes, causing his consumption of heavenly energy to spike dramatically. In that moment, a powerful aura enveloped Zhu Wei, leaving wind in complete shock. In the blink of an eye, Zhu Wei's elemental jewel absorbed the aura, and the overlord bow manifested in his hands. Witnessing this, Wen was astonished to his core, wondering if Zhou Wei was even human to achieve such a feat on his first try, chalking it up to sheer, unbelievable luck. Zhou Wei suggested that his elemental roulette was likely behind this luck. However, Wen had never known anyone to succeed on their first attempt and believed old man Hu Yan would be thrilled beyond words to have Zhou Wei as a disciple. Wen then mentioned that the reason he favored Zhao Wei was because he was a real G who never faked his personality for anyone and wondered if he was taught by Andrew Tate. Soon after, Zhou Wei and Wind arrived outside the consolidating room. Hu Yan turned to them, assuming they had failed, and told them to return and keep trying. Hearing this, Zhou Wei smirked with a glint in his eyes, while Wind informed the old man that Zhou Wei had managed to consolidate on his very first attempt, a feat that nearly gave the old dwarf a heart attack. At that, the crafty geezer quickly demanded that Zhou Wei return the remaining 99 scrolls. But Zhou Wei argued that a gift couldn't be taken back, causing Wen to laugh hysterically, remarking that it just wasn't the old man's day and that he was getting his due from the universe. This irritated Hu Yan, who then insisted that Zhou Wei reveal his elemental jewel to confirm if he genuinely possessed the spatial attribute of the Heavenly Masters, after which he would accept him as his apprentice. Zhu Wei refused, adding that he had another condition for becoming his apprentice, that the old man would never restrict his freedom. Hearing this, Hu Yan shouted that he had never seen a disciple so arrogant, to which Zhu Wei replied he'd never encountered such a miserly old creep. With no other choice, Hu Yan agreed, on the condition that Zhu Wei would one day surpass him in creating consolidating equipment scrolls. But Zhu Wei insisted he make an oath using his jewel. Hu Yan, baffled, stared at Zhu Wei in surprise never having met such a cunning brat. With that, he summoned his heavenly energy, and seven elemental jewels appeared as he swore the oath. 
Zhao Wei dramatically activated his elemental red jewel, and both Hu Yan and Wind were utterly stunned. As they gaped at the red Alexan dried eye elemental jewel, Wind immediately urged Zhou Wei to hide it quickly. Meanwhile, Hu Yan was still in awe, assuming it must be nothing short of a miracle. Curious, he asked if Zhou Wei's elemental jewel also contained the wind attribute in addition to the spatial attribute. Zhou Wei nodded in confirmation, nearly making the old man keel over with shock. He couldn't believe the boy possessed two powerful attributes at once. Hu Yan then burst into hysterical laughter, almost like a crazed clown, leaving Zhou Wei to wonder if the old man was still in his right mind. Wind reassured him, explaining that Hu Yan was overwhelmed with excitement and disbelief at having a disciple with such a rare elemental jewel, declaring that with spatial and wind attributes, Zhao Wei was undoubtedly destined to be a master of consolidating equipment. Finally regaining his composure, Hu Yan addressed Zhou Wei as his prized disciple, vowing he wouldn't hesitate to spend his last coin for a disciple like him. Zhou Wei playfully congratulated Hu Yan on acquiring such a talented student, to which Hu Yan urged him to be modest. But Zhou Wei cheekily responded that his previous teacher had taught him never to be modest. Stunned, Hu Yan asked if he had trained under another teacher, and Zhou Wei replied that he had studied with someone for two years before awakening his heavenly jewel. Hearing this, Hu Yan speculated that Zhao Wei must be younger than 16, the age to begin creating consolidating equipment scrolls. Zhu Wei corrected him, saying he'd turned 14 in a few months, which left Hu Yan speechless. He could hardly believe that a mere 13-year-old could be so cunning, and he joked that Zhou Wei's former teacher must have taught him some shady tricks. Zhu Wei defended himself, insisting he was an honest and trustworthy gentleman. After that, Hu Yan asked Zhou Wei if anyone else knew about his Alexandrite cat eye elemental jewel apart from Shang Wan. Zhu Wei replied that only two people knew, and with a serious expression, the old moron suggested they might need to eliminate those two to prevent any leaks. Zhu Wei laughed, pointing out that it would be suicide since the two he was talking about were Hu Yan himself and Wind. Hu Yan became instantly furious, calling Zhu Wei a foolish brat for joking around reminding him that if word got out about his heavenly jewel before he had at least six sets of elemental jewels, he'd be as good as dead. Zhu Wei assured him he understood, then asked if Hu Yan had ever known anyone with an Alexandrite cat eye heavenly jewel. Hu Yan explained that people with such jewels were usually eliminated, and those who weren't were kept in strict hiding, a response that sent a chill through Zhu Wei. Hu Yan then informed Zhao Wei that since he joined the military, he could return with Shang Wen after her consolidation was complete, as the military would be a secure place to keep him hidden. The old man added that Zhao Wei could also train there until he turned 16, at which point he'd come back for him to start his training in equipment consolidation. Zhu Wei grinned at this, pleased with the idea of spending two years with Shang Wen. Following this, Hu Yan warned him not to attempt consolidating any other equipment scrolls without his permission, to which Zhao Wei agreed noting he didn't have the money to do so anyway. Still doubtful, Hu Yan said he'd need to test Zhu Wei's resolve to believe him entirely. He then instructed Wen to show him. Without hesitation, Wen released a powerful, intense aura, summoning nine red elemental jewels that left Zhu Wei completely shocked. In a flash of blinding light, Wen appeared fully clad in red battle armor, looking almost like a low-budget transformer. Seeing this, Zhu Wei was utterly captivated standing before a man completely outfitted with a complete set of consolidated armor. Even his feet were clad. Wu Yan explained that while each of the five pieces of consolidated armor might seem weak on their own, they became quite formidable when combined. This, he explained, was the deepest secret of consolidated armor sets. When a jewel master used multiple pieces of consolidated armor, their protective power combined and amplified. Wu Yan noted that Zhou Wei currently possessed the Overlord Bao, and could potentially wield at least 11 physical jewels for consolidation in the future. Therefore, it was essential for him to choose his consolidated equipment wisely, as he couldn't afford to waste any physical jewels. Joey's eyes gleamed with excitement. This was precisely what he had always wanted, a highly defensive armor that could save him from the dangers of battle. Wu Yan reassured him that he needn't worry about finding consolidated equipment scrolls. His sole focus should be on intense cultivation for the next two years. Zhu Wei agreed wholeheartedly, assuring Hu Yan that he would practice diligently even without any reminders. Hu Yan then instructed him to return to his room to cultivate, explaining that Shang Wen would need a few days to finish her consolidation. Later that evening, Zhu Wei went to check on Shang Wen, 
but she hadn't completed her equipment consolidation on her first day. He shared his success with her, much to her amazement. He recounted the entire process, including the influence of the dark and evil attributes, and revealed everything Hu Yan had told him, including their agreed-upon conditions. However, coming from humble beginnings, Shang Wen didn't want to take advantage of Zhou Wei, so she declined his offer of free consolidated equipment scrolls. Zhu Wei had no choice but to respect her decision, yet his admiration for her deepened. She then asked, a bit exasperated, if he could lend her 2,000 gold coins. When she angrily demanded to know why he needed the money, the brokey explained that he wanted to purchase his own stored skills. His goal was to test whether his dark and evil attributes would again merge, helping him store a skill in his elemental jewel. If successful, he hoped to store a skill on his first attempt. Could Zhou Wei finally succeed in crafting consolidated equipment and fulfill his dream of becoming a powerful heavenly jewel master? Comment he the in a lie jewel if you're eager to find out in our part 2. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. As always, thanks for watching.